All right, so now it's time for my highlight, I think, and we're going into the live Q&A with our two executives, SAP board members, Thomas sauer Essig and Jürgen Müller. Um, now, Jürgen, as you know, is the Chief Technology Officer of uh, SAP, and he's in charge of the overall platform and technology development. That means, uh, of course, SAP Business Technology Platform. His responsibility covers the areas of database and data management, analytics, intelligent technologies, application development and integration. We saw a lot of those points in the keynote. And he's also responsible for SAP's innovation agenda. Joining uh, Jürgen will also be Thomas Sauer-Essig. Now, Thomas is the board member for product engineering, he has global responsibility for all of SAP's business software applications, uh, including functional areas that span from product strategy and management to product development and innovation. Uh, he takes care of cloud operations, support, quality of all SAP's products, uh, an enormous uh, area. He's responsible for a portfolio that includes SAP S4 HANA, the digital supply chain portfolio, industry solutions, Ariba, Cloud, um, SAP Concur, SAP Fieldglass, and uh, it, it just goes on and on and on. And they're here to answer your questions. And I'm so pleased to have you both here for that very reason. <laughs> I'm excited as well. <laughs> what an introduction. We have so many topics that we can cover. Thank you so much. All right. So I have a couple of good, ice. Good to be here, Beth, Frank, and by the way, great pre-show. Thank you so much. <laughs> great keynote, we should say. Thank you. Thank you too. Absolutely. Two. Thank you. The keynote was fantastic. All right. So I have a couple of icebreakers to get things started. Um, Jürgen, I'm going to go to you first. We have, as you, you've heard a, a hundred times, you've seen it on the brand loop, we have a packed week ahead of us. We have over 500 sessions, hours and hours of content, so much that's happening. Can you, I don't know if you can even answer this, but what are the three things? Can you boil it down to three things that you're most excited about? So you're asking for three things. Just Out of three, the magic number. <laughs> non-stop, <laughs> you ask for three things. Out of a 48 hour non-stop <laughs> program with eight content tracks, etc. Yeah. Okay, first of all, I'm, I'm very thankful. I mean, this year is very challenging for all of us and it's so happy to see more than 60,000 registered participants, excluding everyone directly related to SAP. And of course, then in addition, all the ones watching on Channel One, watching on Twitter, etc. My three things, if you want to have uh, three things, and I will cheat a little bit. Um, first of all, you heard in the keynote, you saw it in the uh, discussion we just had and listened to, the developer community is really key for us. It is key for SAP's current success and it's also key for SAP's future success. And uh, we in the executive board will give everything to make our development ecosystem and community successful. Um, second, in that realm, we are of course delivering innovations. Low code, no code was a huge topic. HANA uh, cloud updates was a huge topic. And we want to, as I also mentioned in the keynote, make it easy for you to try things out. So. A free tier is going to come next year, and we made the first step with the um, expansion of our free trial. And then also at TechEd, if you haven't done so, please register. And if you're registered, you have free access to more learnings and also discounted certifications. And then, okay, I cheated a little bit, <laughs> but my third thing, <laughs> I would like to mention that really the SAP Business Technology Platform is really key for us. We will, you will see more and more features and also strategy talks, but that is important to know. The business technology strategy is the technological foundation for everything we do at SAP and also for what's happening in the ecosystem. All right, now I wanna pick up on the word there, ecosystem, because my next question goes to you, Thomas. Um, with regards to everything that's happening in the current pandemic at the moment, how can we as SAP uh, and our partners support our customers and really help them stay resilient in these circumstances? I mean, first and foremost, we are still living in a very unprecedented times, and I think the numbers are still extremely concerning. That's also the reason why we at SAP certainly help all the various companies like Moderna to really help to bring the, the necessary vaccine to life. But also, I think, um, I think that's also why, why TechEd is so amazing, because the community is actually the key for the success also 
of SAP, and that directly is related to the ecosystem of SAP. And what we certainly saw in this pandemic is actually the necessity to have a very agile supply chain. Supply chain was already one of the most strategic topics uh, for our customers, but I think this pandemic certainly also accelerates to double down on that one. And that's actually the reason why we fundamentally believe that you need to be able to work um, across the supply chain and also um, have a few, a single pain actually, how you manage the supply chain in the cloud, but also remotely on the edge. And this is exactly where I'm actually very excited to announce also our expanded partnership with Microsoft, where we run our SAP digital supply chain portfolio on Microsoft Azure, but also in order to stay close to the factories and close to the machines and also to, to um, make this vision a reality, leveraging also the edge part of Microsoft Azure with the Azure stack um, um, as part of the portfolio. And I think this gives us a, a true opportunity to really help our customers in exactly this very unprecedented times. But also this is, this is something where we double down and continue our development efforts, as I, as I mentioned. But also we have made significant partnerships this year, like with Siemens embracing Team Center uh, in our portfolio, have a deep integration for the digital thread, for the end-to-end -end process from design and engineering to the business applications. And what you fundamentally see is that we really progress on all fronts and really um, on our activities to make that a, a, a great value proposition for our customers. All right, that's an exciting announcement there. So thanks for sharing that with us. Um, so the, I, I just want to explain, I have lots and lots of questions on me from the live Q&A. We also said we were going to take some questions, the top voted questions as well from the keynote, Jürgen. And um, I'm just going to go take one of the questions that came during the keynote. Uh, the magic fairies here in the studio brought this over to me and this is apparently the number one question. And it says, uh, will Visual Studio be the final platform for us developers or is there again new stuff in the pipeline? Put that one to you, Jürgen. Yeah, it's actually very exciting to seeing all these uh, questions uh, coming in live and being uploaded. So I hope you like it. <laughs> um, I also saw the question around Visual Studio uh, Code, and this is actually what we are doing. So with our business application studio that we also featured in the keynote, actually what's happening is that, is that we and also our ecosystem can build Visual Studio Code uh, extensions, and then we use the open source Athena um, IDE in order to uh, adjust wherever we need for our SAP purposes, but you can also use these in Visual Studio Code. So um, if you are um, entering or know already Visual Studio Code, that's a very good start, starting point um, because we will be um, bringing together, and actually you will see more in Keynote 2 tomorrow, we will bring more of our tooling together with the um, Business Application Studio, which are in, in the sense um, Visual Studio Code extensions. Yeah, that was a great plug for the keynote tomorrow. We'll see you there as well. <laughs> okay, looking in the tool, I can see the number one most voted question live happening right now. Thanks to everyone who's sending in their questions. What will be the successor of SAP uh, Fiori? And uh, I think I will go to you, Thomas, first for that one. Yeah, I think that's actually a great question, but I think it's very important that from a from a design perspective that we differentiate on the one hand side the design language, which SAP Fiori will remain the future of SAP, and we will evolve that continuously. And that's for, for us absolutely clear. We want to really move into a great future with our design. That's also the reason why we just actually, I think, yesterday announced the hire of our new chief design officer uh, for SAP, really continuously evolving the design language. And then, for sure, with the technology part, and here you can be restly assured that we continuously also update uh, our technology aspects around all of that. And I think, for short, design is a very emotional topic with SAP software. I'm well aware about that one. But I think we actually did tremendous progress also in the past. And also, I can assure you that we take it holistically. Like, for sure, responsive web apps are the one topic, but we also double down on mobile mobile native applications. You will see more about that, um, what, we, what we do on that front, but also mixed reality, like augmented reality and virtual reality. And that's where you would also see the first productive um, uh, scenarios live. Uh, beginning of next year really taking to, to a different level so really having the full enchilada which is also part of the the sap fiori design system which we have uh, embraced in this regard 
All right, great. And um, Beth, Craig, let me add one uh, a little bit to that uh, answer, because as Thomas rightfully said, it's the design language of SAP Fury. And then also in last year's TechEd, we had a session of how we basically decompose that. So we make it very efficient uh, with Fury elements, for example, if you want to build many, many applications. But then even we have uh, Fury um, capabilities for React, for example, such that you can use the same design language in a different technology. And if you are not familiar with that, Google for it, or look at the last uh, SAP TechEd 2019 keynote, because that was one of the high, highest voted topics uh, in hindsight of, of, the, of that keynote. All right, thanks. Thanks for adding on to that. Um, the next question, I'm, I think I'm going to put to both of you, possibly I'll, I'll start with you, Thomas, and then Jürgen, I'm sure that you'll want to add something as well, because it's on a topic you've both already touched upon, COVID. Um, are there any specific tools SAP is working on to deal with COVID-19 around the world? Yeah, I think we absolutely have actually uh, many offerings to, to help in, in these unprecedented times. For sure, we also have tools which help um, basically the, the, the come back to work uh, scenario which we have in place. We have, we have a multitude of applications with regards to finding suppliers on the network to help to be more agile in this uh, in, in, in this uh, pandemic and crisis where you need to have more agility. So this is also certainly something. So there's a multitude of applications specifically targeted towards the needs we see in uh, in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And um, so I think uh, it's all in the portfolio what we have. And uh, yeah, we double down on that. That's for sure. And Jürgen, I'm sure yeah, you have lots to we, say on the subject. <laughs> yeah, for example, with Qualtrics, um, we have uh, a lot of offerings uh, for, our, for our customers as well. I think, if I remember correctly, more than 55,000 projects were started in our um, customer base. Um, and also we had um, initiatives, to, for example, with the repatriation app in Germany. I mentioned the Corona One app in the keynote briefly. And um, now going forward, it's of course we are also discussing with multiple uh, countries and municipalities on how to help when it is about um, vaccination um, programs and uh, helping um, with any shape or form um, in that process as well. I remember with the repatriation app that went unbelievably quickly. I can't remember, was it less than 24 hours or 48 hours or something? It was just incredible. Yeah, it was 17 you. hours actually. Incredible, Seven, absolutely uh, incredible. 17? <laughs> with SAP technology. Incredible. <laughs> oh, All right. Uh, I can see there, there, there are just so many questions here in front of me. I'm going to go to the, no, the, the next one coming in live. It says, will SAP deliver a low-code platform in the future? The word platform gives it away. Who I'm going to give this one to? Jürgen, would you like to answer? Yeah, you saw it in the keynote that really when we talk about developers, we mean a broad range of actually different personas. And um, we even don't have enough people who can code in order to cope with all the requirements, in order to improve business processes, for example. And therefore, yes, you will see more and more low-code, no-code capabilities from SAP. As we also now launched uh, for TechEd, we have our workflow uh, capabilities in more of a low-code, no-code manner. Also then uh, our capabilities around collaboration in a tight spot around business processes and also business process um, and how to improve those with the intelligent RPA, for example. And we have a whole demo, actually it will be the last demo in tomorrow's keynote as well. So stay tuned for this one and you will see much more from SAP in the no-code, no-code area. It's just the number of plugs for the keynote tomorrow is just fantastic, <laughs> just building up momentum here. <laughs> okay, uh, the next question I can see also, Jürgen, I think this is one for you. Do you see SAP DWC, so Data Warehouse Cloud, replacing SAP BW for HANA in the future? Yeah, today what we are doing is we are serving both customer bases. If you already have BW for HANA installed, you can be happily continuing with this investment. What we see is that actually there's an addition of use cases um, that we tackle with Data Warehouse Cloud. So today, for example, you have your financial data in uh, BW for HANA, but then a, a department, for example, wants to add some uh, third party data. And usually what happens is that central IT doesn't have time. But these use cases of centrally governed plus the freedom to give a department the capability of then adding third-party data to it, 
that is something that we see in our customer base. The demand is super high, and that's why we developed Data Warehouse Cloud for these kind of scenarios. So if you don't have a VW installed at all, and don't have the most sophisticated VW requirements, you can go ahead with Data Warehouse Cloud immediately. And we make sure that the combination of both actually is working fine if you, if you decide to continue on, on that journey. And then very far out, if you decide to go to the cloud only, then of course we will make sure that this will work for you as well. Okay, perfect. Um, I can see the next question in the tool is about SAP HCM module. So Thomas, I'm going to give this one to you. It says, what is the future of SAP HCM module with the advent of SAP success factors? I think it's clear that our strategy is in the cloud and that means all the innovations which we drive in the human uh, resources area and the people area is really driving to SAP success. Because that's our, our focus which we have. And quite frankly, it was mentioned HCM. I think we really need to think differently about it and take it high. And that's the reason why we introduced the human experience uh, management category actually. And there you see all the new innovations coming together, like embracing Qualtrics for the moments that matter, also for the entire employee journey into our success factor um, uh, application. But also, quite frankly, if you think about all the, the integration points, if you think about total workforce management, then you automatically think also about SAP fee class and how we bring contingent workforce and the, the internal employees together. And that's exactly where we just this year, with all the integration activities here, uh, which we did together uh, under the Intelligent Enterprise Program, which Jürgen alluded to also in the in the keynote, um, we basically set up an aligned domain model between all of them to have this visibility and also have a process integration. Like if you if you set up a job requisition internally and you don't find a appropriate personnel, then you can directly forward that to feed class and hire external consultants to help overcome that situation. This is all going uh, basically out of the box now in the integration which we deliver. And for sure, way more of these kind of process integrations. And having said that, you clearly see that we really go to the cloud, help our customers to tackle the new topics, to the new topics where which the HR colleagues uh, are concerned of. But for sure, HCM is for sure, we have a large install base, and we certainly also want to help them to transition to the cloud. And that's the reason why we already basically uh, end of last year announced that we will embrace HCM as part of S4HANA, and with that for sure, we have stability for our installed base to ha have the right time, but clearly all innovations is all in the cloud. Um, and that's where we where we focus um, with, with our HCM and H HXM uh, strategy. Okay, there's a question that's uh, very, very similar, and you've already touched on some of the points, but just for the sake of completion, uh, Thomas, I'm going to ask it. It says, will the HR module be solely developed in success factors or in S4 HANA 2? Will SAP products run on Kubernetes? Yeah, so basically all the new innovations will be developed in the cloud and uh, and again the, H the existing HCM model with uh, module which is embedded in the S4 this is for sure where we we'll have legal and compliance topics which we continuously evolve but all the innovations um, is basically going to the cloud with SAP success factors yeah, absolutely okay perfect thank you so uh, now with 101 votes I can see it right at the top of the list what is the future of ABAP Jürgen that's a question for you I think yeah, we mentioned in the keynote as well. So ABAP um, is still and will continue to be super important in the SAP uh, realm. So um, S4HANA is uh, almost completely developed in ABAP. We are carving out new capabilities that we built. We also built in a cloud native way, for example. But um, also what you see is that um, ABAP, of course, we will continue to have in-app extensions in S4HANA also using ABAP. And as I mentioned in the keynote um, as well, we have a, an ABAP runtime on our platform as well. So that means if you have uh, ABAP capabilities, and there's more than the last number I have in my head, is 2 million ABAP developers in the ecosystem. So that knowledge is not lost. And uh, as you will also see in the developer keynote um, coming up, um, there you will see like ABAP developers plus in the, on the other extreme even cloud native developers, but working together because often you have different um, different capabilities um, and um, therefore the ABAP will continue to be important and the combination of ABAP also we bring into the cloud plus also cloud native capabilities will be uh, the way forward and therefore 
we as SAP, as I also said, we want to care and cater for all developer personas. And also when you um, rely on SAP, you will get reliability back. And that also means that, for example, the commitment of S4HANA is out until 2040. So these are the time dimensions that we also think in. So therefore, don't assume about to go away super soon. Yeah. I'll be still strategic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good to hear. Okay, there's a related question I can see on the topic of ABAP. It says there are a lot of new topics SAP is coming up with day by day. As an ABAP developer, what should my next learning topic be to secure my future? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, can I give that one yeah. to you? Yeah, I, I can. And tomorrow we will have uh, Jodel Kailan actually in the keynote. So again, I, I'm not making it up. It's really the topics that we are covering, covering tomorrow. Um, and here, the next step probably is if you want to expand more into cloud development is our cloud application programming model cup. Um, if you really ask me for an advice, that for me would be the next thing because here we still give uh, quite some guidance of how to do things. And this is an area where ABAP actually is exciting and very efficient to get things done. And that is the cloud application programming model um, that we provide. And there um, you will recognize some of the ABAP topics because there we also, as I said, give guidance on how to do certain things. I will just say at this point, I'm very, very pleased that this is completely transparent and everyone can see the votes coming in and the questions, so, because it does feel like we're hitting bullseye on all the topics that we're going to have in the keynote. Okay, uh, another question for you, Jürgen, this time looking at analytics. Is SAP Analytics Cloud going to replace business planning and consolidation? So it's mirroring the question we had before on the HCM side. Yeah, here. It is more um, black and white, so to say. So it's like the on the HR side that Thomas answered. So um, over time, we will have uh, SAP Analytics Cloud, which is our strategic cloud solution for um, BI, self-service BI, for um, simulations and also for planning. And therefore, we will also bring uh, VPC uh, into that realm. But again, here, as Thomas also mentioned on the uh, HR side of the house, we will continue to help you being compliant, which is also important, and of course invest uh, some in security features, quality topics, everything you need, but all the innovations will happen in the cloud. Yeah. And I think already today, all the, the financial planning which we deliver is, is uh, in uh, in SAC. So it's absolutely uh, critical for all of us. We will bring all the, the workforce planning in there. So this will be really the collaborative enterprise planning layer uh, for all of SAP. So it's a clear strategic intent uh, uh, to have all of that with, with SAC. And for the consolidation part, we also have group reporting uh, in, the, in the portfolio for that aspect uh, of the house as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the next question, uh, again, you literally just mentioned it, Jürgen. Are there plans to open source the cloud application programming model? So, in other words, CAP. Um, a lot of topics around TAP are, uh, CAP are um, actually clear. Um, we are, have no concrete plan to open source that, but I see uh, Gregor um, Wolf is a very well known. Gregor, let's, let's discuss. Um, also what the request behind is, because in, in some areas it makes sense to open source, in other areas, um, yeah, maybe then it's just open sourced, but only we continue working on it, and then it doesn't make sense. So open sourcing needs to have holistic strategy as well. And Gregor, happy to have that discussion. Okay, sorry, I'm just having a Does mic the, readjustment did, here. Did the tool actually say Gregor's name? <laughs> it didn't say Gregor's name. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just obvious because Gregor is a champion for this topic. So yes. <laughs> okay. Um, next question. I think it's something one that's possibly relevant for both of you. Um, when SAP will release solutions to, or when will SAP release solutions to really make zero downtime in all migrations, updates, upgrades, activities in the customers? Uh, uh, too many restrictions today, and some solutions are not generally available. Um, Thomas, I'll give Jürgen's voice a rest and go straight to you first. 
Yeah. No, thank you so much. And yeah, I mean, this is actually a very important question because for us, it's absolutely clear uh, that from a cloud quality perspective, uh, it's the expectation to have zero downtime maintenance processes uh, in place. And we work basically on all the applications, all our software as a service um, applications on, on that one. As mentioned in the, in the question, there are slight differences as of today, uh, and we work on those. But we for sure have also a lot of applications which already uh, fulfill that, uh, where you basically don't see any uh, any uh, uh, downtimes in the upgrades, in the change processes which we run. Um, we have deployed this confidence in, in place for, for, for a lot of applications, but we basically can press the button. We don't realize in the changes in the software. So that's actually our North Star. We're working against that consequently, but also quite frankly, not only in the cloud, but also on premise, we want to reduce the downtimes. And that's the reason we have a year zero downtime initiative in place to also help for our on-premise uh, customers in the, uh, in the ERP world to reduce the downtimes. Uh, significantly. So rest assured, this topic is extremely uh, important for us. And as a former CIO, I certainly can allude to uh, the importance of that topic. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the next question, unless Jürgen, you would like to add anything to that before I go to the next question? Yeah, let's cover the next question. The only thing to add is that Thomas and I, um, as we have applications and technology, we are working uh, on that together, like hand in glove. Okay, okay. I'm going to go to the next question then. And we only have a couple of minutes left. And I do want to make sure that you both get a chance to, 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 to say a couple of things at the end as well. So uh, just very quickly, uh, when, sorry, will the CPI replace the PI, PO in the next five years? Uh, Jürgen, one for you. Yeah, for, for those, yeah, for those who are not uh, deep in it, so actually I started with uh, XI, with this the in, uh, exchange infrastructure, like the um, before actually it was uh, PI and then process orchestration and cloud platform integration is our cloud solution for integration and um, the PI PO is in the on-premise world and here actually it's a prime example of how we think about the transition from on-premise to the cloud because um, you can today of course build your integrations and many of you have invested in many integrations on-premise with PI and PO and now what we did was we enhanced our cloud platform integration um, suite such that you can design your integrations, even if these are on-premise integrations, you can design them with the most modern tool in the cloud, and then you can deploy them on-premise. If for some reason, this is for example, an on-prem to on-prem integration, or you have other reasons why this should run uh, on-premise. And this is how we also foresee that in other areas, we had several of such topics like PW for HANA, how this can work, that we invest into intelligently to make your life easier in that transition from on-premise to the cloud. And then of course, it is at your discretion um, how fast you want to migrate um, from on-premise to the cloud, but we will continue like we will have other, which is this strategic for many years. We will also have on-premise um, software for many years in your company if you decide uh, to continue running this software. So therefore, the same here, most integrations are uh, going to cloud platform integration, but we build this bridge from on-premise to the cloud. Okay, so definite red thread transition to the cloud, very, very clearly coming over in the in the questions there. Uh, Thomas, Jürgen, I, I have about 10 seconds to give you each to uh, to just say your, your closing thoughts, share your closing thoughts on, on the session and TechEd so far. Thomas, I'll start with you. No, I mean, uh, thanks so much for having us. And I think it's it's amazing what comes together here at SAP Tech. And I wish everybody a lot of fun and a lot of learning and exchange throughout the, the date. As you see, there's a lot of uh, execution delivery, which we did. We listened to all of you. And also, restly assured, next year will be also an exciting year. So more to come uh, on that front. And I'm so excited to see how all the pieces now coming together from the application, from the technology aligned on one strategy leveraging the business technology platform for all of integration extensibility. And that's, I think, where the power of SAP comes to life. Perfect. Thank you. And Jürgen? Yeah, not much to add. Enjoy TechEd. I know there's so many online activities going on, and probably you have too many online meetings in the course of this year, but it's really worth it. Uh, check out the eight uh, content channels and the 450-ish uh, sessions uh, that we are having because this is really the latest and greatest and we give it to you for free and don't forget to also sign up for the learning hub and yeah last but not least please then become an active member in our community 
share your experience in community.sap.com, your stories, successes, questions, um, and there we are happy to engage with you. Thank you very much. All right, we'll see you at the keynote tomorrow, Jürgen. Thank you so much, and thank you, Thomas. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, And thank you so much to them both as well. That was a brilliant Q and A. Told you it was one to be excited for, didn't I? I was really. Those were really. <laughs> and and the fact that he actually knew who probably or could have asked that question without it being listed in the tool was really cool. Um, <laughs> because the SAP community is there and they are asking, and SAP is listening, and I think that's really cool. And speaking of the community. I, I think we have our next check-in coming up, don't we? I thought we did. I believe we do. Denmark is coming up. Yes, already. I believe we're actually checking in with the community. I'm looking around for the community. I've spotted the community. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're, yeah, we're going to be checking in with the community on this one. Um, what we've done is we've asked a bunch of folks around the world to, uh, to kind of keep their eyes and ears open in their parts of the world to, so that we can hear how the community is doing. Hello and welcome back to SAP TechEd 2020 here from the rooftop. Isn't this great? So I'm really proud to introduce you to you something very special which we have this year. Because, you know, on on-site events, you meet a different lot of people. You can just go in the coffee corner and talk about the sessions, keynote or whatever. So this is not possible today. And we thought it makes sense to select a number of people to talk about um, what's going on over there. So from all around the world, um, for example, how they are um, experiencing SAP TechEd, uh, where are they? So this we call remote check-ins and we have several locations from all around the world. For example, Australia, Americas, India, Canada and of course Europe as well and um, as Craig already mentioned we have a very nice SAP champion she's also a senior consult IT consultant it's Anne Johnson and uh, Anne will be here with me so that we can talk about what how is tech it, uh, has SAP tech it all going over there with her and um, yeah I'm really happy that she will be here with me and there she is hi Anne Hello, how are you? Didn't you see my really beautiful rooftop? I have seen it, it's beautiful. And I am so happy to be here with you. It's a bit weird that it's digital, but we are, we'll have to make up to it another time. 
That's right, that's right. Um, th this year everything is different and um, yeah, I mean, you have been really active in the last years with events, but you were also already uh, so great in founding a new kind of event in SAP Online Track that was a big part of you from this year. So congrats to that. It was really, really successful. And now we are, we are back in this virtual environment and um, yeah, I'm really happy to chat with you. So how are you and where are you uh, joining us from? So I only see a dark background. So are you in the living room or where are you? <laughs> I am at, in my office right now and um, I am in Denmark in Copenhagen. And here in Denmark, we, we usually greet each other by talking about the weather. And the weather here is absolutely gray and boring and it has been gray for multiple days. Oh my God. But uh, usually, <laughs> You know, it doesn't hinder our big spirit um, because it's so on Christmas. And then, of course, COVID hit us. And now uh, we are not allowed to go out and have all that Christmas fun. So actually, it's kind of a time of introspection here for us here in Copenhagen and also for reflections. Yeah, that's right. And it's actually the same here. Um... I mean, Germany is not so far away from Denmark, so we experience in <laughs> the same thing. And um, yeah, so we all have to figure it out and we all have to live with it and accept it. Um, and I think next year can come very soon. So yeah. uh, let's focus yeah. on, on the content of what we already saw. Did you watch the keynote? Oh, absolutely. And that also plays into the whole aspect of reflection because I think it was a bit different this year. I think it was good and it was actually a lot of interesting perspectives that Jürgen Müller, he, he proposed. So I would say there are three major points that I really took home with me and I think I'm not the only one. Um, first of all, the Canadian uh, railway example with Hana, he focused a lot on the fact that it, it's about the value of the use of the technology. So it's creating the success stories through how the user experience or what difference it makes in the use yeah. um, of the technologies. Yeah, that's right. So this is more important than ever. And um, I also like, for example, that he put so many people from the community as you are also an SAP champion in there. So that wouldn't be possible on stage to bring all these people on stage, right? Yeah, I actually wrote that down. I thought that was a very great of him. And I've, I've never seen anyone do that before. Putting the makers, as he put it, front and center. That was absolutely beautiful. And the fact that he highlighted that we are all developers of some sort and some kind, and we need to respect our, and, and, and find ways to, uh, to meet us as developers, us in the community. That was, that was beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I agree to that. And, and um, I mentioned that you have been active in uh, community-driven events. So there's, there are also some going on in parallel, kind of watch parties in SAP Stammtisch from Bern, Frankfurt, Munich, so uh, Stuttgart, I think, too. So what do you think about these events? And do you have any other ideas how we can proceed with the virtual world? It's actually pretty interesting, uh, Svea, that you mentioned this. I've um, been talking to some friends here in Denmark uh, from the SAP community where we, we actually want to be creative and, and find hybrid ways of being together. Either it doesn't have to be only the digital space or the physical space, but we can, we can actually utilize the fact that the last year has been so much digital and be creative about it. So we actually wanted to make one of those watch parties as well here in Copenhagen, but uh, COVID hit big and uh, now there are restrictions, sadly. So uh, we'll, we'll have to deal with it uh, in another form of kind of uh, getting together. So a lot of people have mentioned the Discord channel already. Mm -hmm. And um, I would recommend looking into that uh, as well, it's a, it's a different way of being a, a small or a local community, just digitally. 
Yeah. Yeah. One thing I have to mention, though, the, those watch parties are also digital, right? So there's also no personal meeting possible in Germany, right? Okay. So just to mention that one. Um, what are your upcoming plans then for SAP Tacket? Do you have any sessions in mind you want to watch? Yeah, first and foremost, the customer experience um, track, because I think this is a, it's a huge potential area and it fits well into the whole UX and design uh, experience, the whole end-to-end -end process. Um, and of course, I'm going to be watching a lot about Fiori and keeping myself updated. But I've also seen that they have some uh, sessions about real life use cases and real life scenarios. These are immensely, I, I think they're going to be huge potential because we have uh, uh, not really interchanged information and uh, learnings from the past year. And I think we could, we could learn a lot from each other. How did you deal with uh, a, a real case uh, the last year? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds really, really exciting. So I hope uh, you are excited as I am about the upcoming sessions. This is really, really great. Um, let us briefly talk about the SAP champion role. Do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, so it, it's actually um, a lot of different things uh, packed into one title, so to see. Um, so the champion, of course, has the role of helping the community uh, either get online or get started, um, get in touch with others. It also is about uh, creating multiple or incubating uh, more possibility for more community. So if someone out there is sitting, having a great idea about, let's, let's do something together. Um, we as the SAP champions can help you um, grow that idea and get in touch with the right people so that you are able to, to do what you want to do with this community. Um, and lastly, we actually also help a lot with the Q and A's, uh, the blog sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will find us there and thank you. Hmm? thank you very much so this is really really great to hear you and uh, I, have, I recommend to follow you in SAP community thanks for <laughs> being part of of this thank you very much Anne thank you no problem <laughs>
and it's I'm just I'm I'm blown away by this. And I do want to make one clarification very quickly. Um, as Beth made a comment, I am running and checking my phone for all the notifications on yeah. social media. I made a comment during the executive Q&A that we didn't see the name. And I actually, of course, got fact checked and somebody from the community sent it to me. Yelena, thank you very much. Um, she sent me a screenshot. They do see the name. So all of you in the audience do see the name. We did not see it here on the stage. So um, the back end of the tool removes the names for us. So so we didn't see that. So, but I thank you for for catching me out on that and and sending me a screenshot. So we actually see what you see. So that was very cool and very appreciative. Um, and a lot going on already. A lot of stuff. We've got, of course, our content tracks, and we're starting now into where all the contract tracks are opening up. All of them are going, and the content tracks are really cool. And I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. <laughs> so you I'm beat gonna, me too. You beat I'm me. I'm gonna too. try. Um, <laughs> I won't look at my card at all but I can read the wall, the monitor there, Integrated <laughs> Intelligence Suite, Database and Data Management, um, Intelligent Technologies, Customer Experience, Application Development and Integration, Analytics, um, Digital Transformation with the Intelligent ERP, and of course, our partner, Community. I didn't read my card. But you were looking at the monitor, that doesn't count. <laughs> that does not count. But oh, I, come I, on. I will give you kudos for that because you have to try and remember eight tracks and I just try and remember Four market areas, so that's fair enough. I have half of what you have to try and remember, but please. Mine have more letters, <laughs> so I think it's more than half. <laughs> um, but I did want I did want to talk a little bit about the content tracks, and and in particular, uh, as we're 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 really starting to dive into the content, really deep dive content areas of everything going on. Um, for me, I was looking through the, the different content tracks and upcoming ones, and I want to kind of highlight, as Jeffrey did um, during the, the panel yeah, discussion, he highlighted a couple yeah. there. Um, I wanted to also go ahead and highlight a couple for me, too. Um, I was looking, in particular, because coming up first, most of the content tracks are all kicking off, including Channel One, mm -hmm. with Strategy Talks. And at 7 p.m. At 7 p.m., in just a few minutes. Um, so in fact, uh, like three. Yeah. <laughs> um, magic hour. It's magic hour. Um, and there was two that stood out in particular to me. Now, I they stand out to me for various different reasons, but I wanted to share them with everybody here. Um, ST108, so Strategy Talk 108. This is the one with Jana, Jana Richter, on business automation with artificial intelligence and AI business services. Um, I am a huge fan of all the stuff that we're doing around the artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all of this. Um, we've seen it here as we're walking around. The, the security is camera operated, and it does uh, rec image recognition of just our, our this area because we're all wearing masks. So I this whole area is brilliant for me. And of course, um, because I've done a lot around this topic, and I'm really excited personally about the topic, is ST111. So, triple ones, uh, this is realizing the data superpower with Irfan Khan. I'm excited about that one too. I'm really excited for that one. Uh, I think it's gonna be really cool stuff. And and they're all in there. You can go to the session catalog, you can look all of these up, you can you can add them to your, your calendar, everything like that. How do you add them to your calendar again? Ah. Um, so if you're in the session catalog and you're looking through or you're looking through based on day, by time, by strategy talk or, or by whatever session type, as you see them in the list, you will actually have the ability right there to add to schedule. Pretty simple. It Can't get any easier. It couldn't be any easier than add to schedule, really, could it? So uh, definitely you want to do that because that's how you get the full Q&A experience. That's how you can join in and talk to the experts uh, in the Q&A chat and uh, get your questions answered by them. And a lot of the strategy talks will also have um, sort of expert interviews. We're going to have one in just a minute. Um, and for that, we'll take the questions as well that you are submitting and we'll have a look at those and we'll take those to the speakers and to the execs and presenters as well. So um, up here, coming up next on Channel One, um, we are going to be talking to Max Wessel. Max is the Chief Learning Officer and he's going to be talking to us about why learning is leverage. So that's the first strategy talk, talk, Nick Talk, talk. <laughs> Kicking things off here at seven o'clock, that's the magic hour when all the content tracks um, will start with their strategy talks. And over here, we'll have Max Wessel, Chief Learning Officer, talking about learning, which as we've heard, is a super important topic. So stay with us and we'll see you in a little bit.
All right. Well, that was a quick break. Welcome back. 